of the 146,000 hectares of vineyards in Australia, 39% of that is dedicated to Shiraz. The Australian Shiraz that most people are familiar with is Yellowtail, but for me that wine doesn't even come close to scratching the surface of what's possible with this grape. Shiraz is the same grape as Syrah, and there's a lot of different legends about where its origins are from. Some legends had it that it was from Syracusa in what is now Sicily. There's also a legend that it came from the city of Shiraz in modern day Iran. However, there's a lot of evidence out there to point that it's actually from the Rhone Valley, in particular the Northern Rhone. The grape is called Shiraz in South Africa and Australia. Fun fact though, according to Paul Lukacs' book Inventing Wine, which I highly recommend as a wine geek, it was actually called Shiraz in South Africa first as the Dutch explorers brought the grape to South Africa and then eventually it migrated to Australia. One time I was at the Professional Wine Writers Symposium at Meadowood in Napa Valley and the first evening when all the wine writers got together there was a trivia night and the question was where was the grape Syrah first called Shiraz? My group was the only one to get it right because I said South Africa. Syrah Shiraz was brought by James Busby from Montpellier France to Australia in 1832. Some of the world's greatest red wines are Australian Shiraz namely the Penfolds Grange which I wish we had here. We don't but we have the wine that's the next step. There's also some iconic wine from producers like Tyrell's, Peter Lehman, Clona Killa just to name a few. There was a time period where more fashionable Bordeaux varieties like Cabernet were prevalent in Australia, but in the late 20th century, Shiraz in Australia had a big comeback. Australian Shiraz generally is made in a different style than Northern Rhone Syrah. Usually if you're talking about Rhone Syrah, especially from the Northern Rhone, it's going to be a little bit stemmy. You're going to have some violet notes, but the tannins are going to be a little grippy. In some cases, some great examples from the Northern Rhone almost have more red fruit flavors. However, when you're talking about Australian Shiraz, the grapes are grown in and vinified the wine in a style where it's a little bit softer, it's not as tannic, usually a lot darker. You're gonna have think blackberry type flavors. You're still gonna get some meat and pepper type notes that you get in terms of French Syrah. But I think mouthfeel and fruit ripeness is the biggest separator. Australian Shiraz is great with meat. Barbecue, I actually think it's a better option in steakhouses where Cabernet Sauvignon is a lot of times overpriced. Probably the most famous region in Australia is Barossa in terms of Shiraz. There, some of the vines are over 100 years old. Some of them even own rooted. Those are usually bigger, more robust style Shirazes. You also have some beautiful ones in McLaren Vale, which also have old vines. Yarra Valley, which I'm a huge fan of. Hunter Valley. Also, Kunawara, which is famous for its red cells and its Cabernet Sauvignon, also has some beautiful Shiraz. I've also tasted some gorgeous ones in Margaret River in Western Australia. Speak of the devil, Shiraz is actually responsible for one of the seminal moments in my wine career. I remember I was traveling around the world the first time. This was back in 2008, I believe. And I stopped to see my friend in New Zealand who he had worked for a wine shop before. He said, Matt, you want a wine? I said, sure, let's open something up. I was drinking wine back then. I just didn't know a ton. And he poured me, I still don't know the producer, but all I remember, it was a Shiraz from Margaret River. And after we finished the bottle, it was a big glass. And I remember smelling that glass for about five minutes because it was full of violets, pepper, and fruit notes. It was just so intoxicating. So Chris Blackman, if you're watching, thanks a lot for that. I think Australian Shirazes are extremely friendly because they're softer, they're usually not tannic, they have so much fruit and they have these small nuances. For a wine that's so soft and fruity like Shiraz, sometimes I feel like it's be hard to taste the difference between terroirs, but we're gonna do so here today. I have wines from five different regions. You don't have to spend a ton to get great Shiraz. However, you can start to get pricey. All these wines here go anywhere from 40 to 120 US dollars. So we're talking about some pretty serious wines. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get tasting. Some big, bold wines. We're tasting out some big glasses. These are the best inexpensive wine glasses. These are the Rovsia Burgundy glasses. They're supposed to be meant for Pinot Noir. I think they're gonna work great with Shiraz because they're big, bold. Gonna show off a lot of the aromatics. I put my money where my mouth is. I just bought a whole second set of four of these just for casual use because I like them so much. I have a link in the description box. Check them out. We have some pretty iconic wines here. By the way, most of these came in screw caps, so I had to use my Corvin Pivot as well as my regular Corvin. I used these to extract a little bit of wine, then I had somebody mix them up. When I was sourcing these wines, I tried to get a mix of real iconic wines versus some good wines that are kind of newcomers. Let's take a look here. Let's start out with wine number one here. Wine one is significantly lighter than wine two because usually Shiraz from Australia come with a lot of color. 
wow. When I get wines, especially from the south of Australia, I get this kind of minty, like eucalyptus type flavor, what I'm getting here. This is extremely red licorice. The fruit doesn't jump out. Menthol, red licorice, red berry type flavors, really complex. Usually these Shirazes have violet notes. This has more like a yellow daffodil type flower note. White pepper, really nice. Usually Australian Shirazes are big and fruity up front. If you were giving me this double blind, I don't think I could tell that this is an Australian Shiraz. It's more delicate, not as fruity, not as in your face. I gotta tell you here, the length. I'm still tasting this wine. It's like a minute later. Ugh. I'm still tasting this wine after like a minute. They're just layers and it's just, there's a lot of staying power. Stemmy, not as fruity. The layers here are really what stand out, and it makes me think that this wine's gonna age super well. I find that Australian Shiraz, they usually age pretty well or age pretty slowly. I remember one of my friends that collects grains, he was like, my goodness, that doesn't age. <laughs> number one's a hell of a start. Let's move on to number two here. Two, much more what I think of when I think of Australian Shiraz. Blackberry, black cherry. These almost can smell kind of candied in a way, not in a bad way. Sometimes you're in the mood for that, which I am right now. Violets, oh, smells really good. Mm. Just like a little bit of bacon fat. Oh, soil, earth, this is really good. The nose on two is killer. Completely out of the gate, two different styles. Number one was delicate, number two was big, bold. And two is awesome. One and two are pretty serious wines. <laughs> Let's move on to three and four. Three and four, typical Australian Shiraziness. They're gonna be dark, bold. Right here, the eucalyptus, the menthol really stand out in wine three. The wood comes out a little bit, not too strong, but it does come out. Mmm. This has got so much fruit, Australian Shiraz, that like, the wood is kind of highlighted. It's not It's not a dominant flavor. Number three, it's a little bit softer than the other two. The first two had some tans, had some structure, especially wine number one. Three, it's just mouth coating. It's just delicious. The tannins are a little bit chalky, so to speak. Almost like some people that are watching don't remember the old chalkboards in school. If you <laughs> had to go like this with the erasers, you get this chalkiness in your mouth. That's kind of what you get. I think that three is probably the most crowd friendly type of wine because it's fruity. It's just up front, but it has some structure. Let's move on to wine four here. Three and four are kind of similar. Blackberries, you know, you get a touch of wood, some leather. Again, these wines are younger too. One thing I noticed is Australian Shirazes, they start to age. There's so much fruit there. You don't get a ton of tertiary notes taking over and the acidity because in Australia, basically a lot of the wine world, acidic fine wine is perfectly fine. It's legal. Sometimes when you, I get aged Australian wines, Australian Shiraz, the acidity kind of pops out. This has a little bit more hickory. Let me go back and compare with three here. Some pretty serious wines. <laughs> Five is the most floral. It's like the violets really come out. It's a lot of stemminess. It's not as fruity as three and four. Like I'm liking the stemminess kind of like a lot. Five is really up my alley. The stems and the violets come before the fruit. Sometimes with these Australian Shirazes, they can be so explosive and the blackberries can come right at you. That's not the case here. There is complexity, nuance, and pretty nice finish. Maybe not as long as two and three, but I think it's actually very good. Let's move on to wine number six here. Mm. Six kind of smells like four. Blackberries, hickory, leather, that menthol type note. A lot of them have this menthol type flavor. There was something I liked on the back end of this. Hold on one sec. Number six has, at, at, the, at the back end, has this kind of weird, uh, a strawberry fruit roll up wrapped in leather type flavor. <laughs> Man, I'm liking the length and the, several of these wines are a lot more structured. Usually when you get the entry level or the mid range Australian Shiraz, you don't have a ton of tannins. All these are pretty structured. They have tannins. All these are great wines. I did see a few stylistic differences, mostly between one and the rest of them. One was a little bit lighter. However, there are varying degrees in structure. I think the flavors were quite similar between these wines. So I'm gonna be interested to see where the regions. However, the structure was a little bit different. That might just come down to winemaking. These are not the same vintages as well. Whereas Australia though, you can adjust quite a bit, just like the USA. So let's start out with wine number four, very Australian Shirazi, black fruit, hickory. There was oak there. It was a compliment. It was not the main focus. I gave 92 points. I thought it was very good. Very good. There are no losers in this uh, this tasting. Let's take a look here. <laughs> 
one of the most expensive wines in the bunch. This is the Penfolds RWT, which stands for Red Wine Trial Bin 798, Shiraz from Barossa Valley 2018, 120 bucks. This wine does see French oak, so the oak integration was fantastic. I wanna see if I missed anything on that. My good, you know, in the past, years ago, this is one of the more expensive wines. I would think, you know, what's wrong with my palate? Look, it's really, really, really good wine. That's all, you know, just I enjoyed some of these other ones just a tad bit more. The Bin 798 is kind of like a step below the Grange. This along with Saint Henri are Penfold's other high-end wines. I think I prefer Saint Henri just a little bit more. Still a good wine. Let's move on here. Number five was the one where the stems and the violets really came out the most. It didn't lead with fruit. That's why I think I liked it a lot more. Had some serious structure. Stem violets, blackberry, I gave 93 plus points. I think people that maybe like some of these herbal or green notes of Cabernet Sauvignons or maybe some Cabernet Franc type notes, this is the Shiraz for you. Uh, let's see here, 93 plus points. Let's see. This is the Yalumba. This is a biodynamic wine. This is the Steeple from Barossa Valley 2018. 59 bucks, 15 months in French oak. I thought this was really good. I mean, look at the two Barossa ones came out of the gate swinging here, but yet they weren't so similar in style. The Yalumba, the steeple, like I said, the violets, the flowers really stuck out. Yalumba is a phenomenal producer. They're a bigger producer, but yet they're still family owned. I think the wines at all price points are absolutely stellar. <laughs> That's a heck of a wine. All right, wine number three. I think that a lot of people might think that this wine is the absolute best because it's so fruity, it's so big and explosive. The oak highlights it, but for me, the tannins and the structure really were really nice. When I tasted these two side by side, I preferred three just slightly. So I gave this 94 points. I think it's very good, very good. Let's take a look here. I know it's a scoop. This is the K Brothers Hillside Shiraz 2017, $65 from McLaren Vale. McLaren Vale, usually the Shiraz is known to be a little more open, a little bit more breezy. This 14.5 alcohol was still a big boy. The structure on this was very good. Their top Shiraz is the Block 6, which I had about a month ago. I had an age one. I thought it was pretty phenomenal. Maybe the labels could use a little bit of work, but serious wine, 65 bucks. I know it's not cheap. I think this is great steakhouse wine. Number six here. It was similar to wine number four in terms of flavor. I thought that six had a similar fruit as hickory. It had similar fruit type flavors. What got me is this fruit roll up and leather type component towards the back end. I was adoring it, 94 plus points. Let's take a look here. This is the Eight at the Gate Family Selection Shiraz 2019 from Rat and Bully. This comes in at 48 bucks. Beautiful Shiraz. Rat and Bully is a lesser known region that's right next to Kunawara, so that shares the Terra Rosa soils. I know that a lot of fruit for more expensive wines are bought from there. Eight at the Gate is a producer I really like. You can buy direct from them here in the US. And 48 bucks, 94 plus points. I thought it was an outstanding wine. Outstanding. Okay, the top two wines. These had just a small point difference. However, I thought the styles were completely different. Let's start out with wine number two. It was richer, Australian Shiraz. It had this bacon fat component that I really liked. Long, the length here is what really stood out to me. I thought it was excellent. Darker, more traditional Australian Shiraz. I thought it was quite similar to wine three here. 95 points. Let's take a look here. What we got here? The Shaw and Smith Shiraz from Adelaide Hills, 2021. This wine's 40 bucks. <laughs> My cousins are Martin Shaw and Michael Smith. Michael Smith's an MW. Adelaide Hills, around the city of Adelaide, there's a little bit more elevation there. It's actually known more for Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay. There is some Shiraz there. This is the cheapest wine in the bunch. I didn't pick it up as a cool climate performer, but man, 40 bucks. I think this is outstanding, real, and it's worth seeking out. Kudos to Sean Smith. Okay, and the top wine. This wine stood out in terms of stylistic difference. It was different than all these wines. Uh, licorice, the white pepper, lighter style, more red berry fruit type flavors. 
Again, it was an explosive up front, but the length on this was just killer. I have it at 96 points. It's a heck of a wine. 96 points. You ready? I know what's the last one's left, and this is one of Australia's most iconic wines. This is the Clonakilla Shiraz Viognier from Canberra. So this is New South Wales, the same state that has Hunter Valley, another famous area. 120 bucks, 95% Shiraz, 5% Viognier co-fermented. So it's kind of a play on Cote Roti 2021. So this is a baby. The pen folds on this were the most expensive wines. The stylistically was quite different. This is gonna be more to palettes that like the Syrah style. If you're looking for Australian Shiraz, as I say stay away from this. This is just more to my palate's liking and I'm excited to drink some of this tonight. I think if I remember right, they started by planting Viognier and maybe some Cabernet varieties. I can't remember what they started, but when the owner went and tasted the wines from Cote Roti, he said, this is what I want to make. And it's one of Australia's most iconic wines. The other iconic Shiraz from Australia is the Grange from Penfolds, where Grange is a multi-regional blend. There's grapes from all over the place. The Shiraz Viognier is a single vineyard wine, so it's a little bit of kind of like the antithesis of the Grange. All good wines though. So tell me, do you like Australian Shiraz? Do you have a favorite region, a favorite producer? I'd love to hear in the comments below. Thanks a lot. See ya.